Hello everyone. Welcome to my, my gallery and the opening of our latest show, which is called The Leaning Pitcher. Um, we did a little catalog uh, for this, this show, and you can email me if you'd like to get uh, a copy. Um, the, this is part of a series of shows that, that I've been doing over particularly the last year and a half, two years, trying to highlight off-the-radar areas of historic Pueblo pottery. So historic Pueblo pottery ha has has gained a reputation that if you're not collecting certain levels of pottery, for example, four color acamas with birds, lots of colors, and 1880s, then you're not collecting something statusy enough or, or, or worthwhile. Those are also very expensive areas to, to collect. And the fact of the matter is there's wonderful areas of historic Pueblo pottery that have just been underappreciated and ignored and never brought together in, in, in a collection. So the, the origin of the Cup Show um, actually goes back a couple of years when I started to uh, visit my friend Robert Nichols on Canyon Road. He's always loved small forms and I bought some of his small pitchers and cups with the idea that however long it took me I was going to gather enough for um, a collection. What I had trouble with was finding Pueblo pitchers of any size. Many of them that I have are that big. You can see some on, on, on the website. This past August, Teal McKibben's daughter-in-law, my friend Margaret, who's sitting here in the front row and who won't get up here to take a bow, um, called me up and said, hey Lynn, I think I got stuff you'd like to see. Would you like to come over? I'd been to Teal's workshop a number of, of times when I had my gallery on Canyon Road in Santa Fe. Uh, buying jewelry from, from Teal. I always thought she was fun and, and wonderful. I never paid much attention to her, her pottery. I walked in and kind of using a phrase that one of my customers used for my Blackware show this past summer, it was the mother load of beautiful, painterly, idiosyncratic pictures. So the show's called The Leaning Pitcher. I have one of, of, of the leaning pictures here and what I love about the show, and in contrast to the areas of historical pottery perfection I talked about before, people who love an art form like this, it was never considered to be high art. In fact, many of these pieces were used maybe for the art market, maybe to be used at home, and, and they, they, they weren't discarded if they weren't perfect. What I saw immediately were two things when I looked in Teal's studio with Margaret. One was, a lack of absolute perfection. That lack of absolute perfection just automatically gave you a feel of warmth. It's not like you can go to the Humane Society and you see um, dogs of, that are like multiple breeds. They're, they're like not perfect. And they're way lovable, warm, and wonderful. That's how I felt about this collection. The other thing that, 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 that became very apparent to me and then as, as uh, Margaret was showing me around and, and, and helping me to learn how to look at Teal's collection was just how visual Teal's choices were. So some were, were really quite fine. Um, this large piece is beautifully, beautifully formed. Slipped all the way to the bottom. It's called Black on Cream from Santo Domingo. It's an early large pitcher and this was made by a master. This is a beautiful, well-made potter by someone who is just excellent at a craft, at potting. This is a complex design for someone who piles using traditional coil and scrape methods. The spout, just having it sit straight like this. The paint, simple, 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 and beautifully complementing the lovely shape of this picture. It's a major piece and, and beautiful done by an artist. Others are really nice, not so perfect. But what Tia was, was searching for was a visual element, a strong visual element in her collection. And she basically then would, would immortalize them in her pastel drawings. And uh, you will have some close-ups that will superimpose as, as I'm talking. But what you'll see is that many of the pictures that are in this collection are in the pastel drawings. What's, what's fun is to see that some of these pictures must have been favorites of Teal's. They're not all in this collection. You'll see them on, on the website in the, in the show, and I'll, I'll write about them. We'll do some more videos on individual pictures. 
But this leading picture is in pastels again and again and again. This lovely small picture, which again, not perfectly formed, sort of leans, but has been handled and handled and handled and has a lot of what feels like almost fresh patina. Well, many of these pictures were in Teal's home for so long and even in, in the kitchen. Well, whether pictures were, were in a collector's kitchen or a Pueblo kitchen to pick up foodstuffs, that's, that's the nature of the patina. That and just lovingly handling these pictures for so many years. They talk a bit about the 20th century. There, there's there's a, a yellow uh, patina that's on many historic pieces of Pueblo pottery. Well, first half of the 20th century, most everybody smoked, so it's food, cigarette smoke. It's, it's it, in, in a way, a picture of American history in a nutshell, all embedded in the beautiful surface of, of, of these pots. So this one is a little funky. It leans. The paint sort of goes downhill. The, the red dots sort of don't stay in the lines. Somehow it just doesn't matter. It didn't matter to Teal, and it doesn't matter to us because Teal loved these pictures. They survived for us to enjoy today. There's some really interesting selections and some things I've just never seen. This coffee pot. So those of you who are, who are close to my age, this looks like 1940s coffee pots that my, my grandma had. I have just never seen a 1940s, maybe 1950 form like this. Well, Teal loved it too. It's in pastel after pastel after pastel. It's a busy design and a complex one. The form itself isn't one that, that any Pueblo potter would have done again and again and again. The, the designs in, in all these, these quadrants are difficult and again, just you know, perfectly complements. And again, the, the paint isn't real fine. It's, it, it's thick. The lines aren't perfectly straight. You know, if, if they were and if this pot was perfectly symmetrical, it just wouldn't be as warm and lovable as it is. This is just a wonderful and, and unique piece of, of pottery. And I wish I could have talked to Teal about her eye and how she came to uh, pick the pieces that she did because each and every one that she picked is just, you know, just wonderful in their own way. So an interesting aspect of, of, of this one yeah, you'll see a lot, a, a lot of these. There's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of color. This one has what appears to be, I don't know, you know, holly leaves and, and, and berries. Holly leaves and berries don't, don't predominate all that much in New Mexico. This artist thought they'd be beautiful on, on a pot. So there's like, you know, color and, and design. This jar and the simplicity of its designs, just meandering vines and, and leaves with bi just bisected uh, simply in, in the middle, complementing the jar. Simple, simple, simple. And they would often be used to anchor these designs. So there's a lot of pictures in these pastels. This one, with its stateliness and dignity, just seems to form a firm foundation, like, like a strong parent in, in a home with the kids running around and everything. Somehow everything seems peaceful and wonderful because there, there, there's that anchor. This wonderful piece seemed to serve that function in many of, of the pastels. The piece I want to draw attention to, and we'll, we'll do a separate video on this, and you, you can read the blog on, on the website. This is simply a spectacular picture for, for, for this form. It's about 1910, 1920. Again, you know, not perfect. It's got a little water damage and slip loss down under the handle. It's been, it's been handled a lot. It also has a rich, deep patina. It has three separate design fields. It has something that's rather, rather audacious at Santo Domingo, Kiwa Pueblo. Triple framing lines between the designs, as if the artist is saying, this is significant. Take your time. Look close. See this picture. It's also beautifully formed. Again, the simple traditional designs, not many flourishes, it's complex, but it, it's just an array of traditional designs from Santo Domingo, but all of them beautifully, crisply painted. The creamy slip is uniform, the black, rich, deep uniform. This was made by a master potter, and I'm attributing this 
to the Aguilar sisters and possibly Filipita, who was a master potter at Santo Domingo, 1910 to about 1930. So again, this one, not so funky as this. But a collection of this kind of material is very forgiving in how collectors might choose to array these pictures. And I think it's, 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 it's very rare, and I've seen next to none of the pictures in Teal's collection that weren't picked up and handled. So they, they weren't treated as, as fussy art, but almost like children who needed to be nourished and held and stroked and petted and loved. That's the feeling that I've gotten from this entire collection. So please take your time, look at the videos, look at the images on, on the website. Call me if you wish to buy a piece. I'll fall over you know, weeping with joy if you do. If you just want to call and talk pottery, I'd love that. So thank you for much, so much for being here tonight.